Good morning. I love my baby because she's so cute. I hold it a lot. Yeah. Good morning, you guys, and welcome back to Eat, Move, Rest. So I feel like I'm in a good place to do a day in the life video being six weeks postpartum. We are coming out of the mist, so to speak. So my first 40 days, I would say, were a good mix of relaxation and overwhelm. Wow, it really hit me that I'm a mom of three. We're a family of five. There have been many tears shed. And then there's been so many more moments of just overwhelming bliss and gratitude and so many baby snuggles and so much love. Breastfeeding is going wonderfully. I've been staying well hydrated, well nourished. Dusty's been making us some really epic dinners this past 40 days. Staying on my green smoothie game, lots of oats. They're great for lactation. I'm doing lots of lactation brownies and muffins. They're in our recipe app if you guys aren't aware, but they're also good for the whole family, not just for lactating moms <laughs> as far as fitness goes and repairing my body doing an ab rehab challenge with nancy anderson she has an app just launched into it about five days ago and i plan to incorporate that along with some gentle forms of exercise so first things first I'm gonna make us a quick green smoothie. One of my new favorite superfoods I've been adding in is sea moss gel. So it's phenomenal. It is so rich in trace minerals. So it contains 92 of the 102 minerals that our bodies need. It's great for energy and metabolism, immunity, digestion and elimination, and even hair, skin, and nails. So my hair has been growing wildly out of control. I'm very grateful for that. I've only added one new supplement, which is olive leaf cell extract. So it's Oliveda's Hero product, which is the IO-1, it's an ingestible. Um, they have several incredible skincare products as well, but the ingestibles are where I always say to start. We're gonna make our green smoothie. The base is mainly just lots of frozen bananas, mango, pineapple, kale, and a green apple thrown in there. And then we do protein and chia and flax for omega-3s. We do a Brazil nut for selenium, some dulse for iodine. Dulse is just a sea veggie. Brazil nuts are really good. Selenium is important for your thyroid function. It's also good for your hair. The funny thing is that it seems goofy to put just one in your smoothie, but that's really all it takes to get your daily dose of selenium. So I feel like I know my body and I'm feeling good and feeling ready. I'm gonna take things easy, nice and slow. Just gonna pedal it out for 20 or so, maybe 30 if I feel good. And also I did like a breath assessment, pelvic floor strength assessment, and a diastasis assessment, and I don't have it at all this time. And I think I have to credit it to doing the Nancy Anderson ab prehab while I was pregnant. So I highly recommend her content. It's incredible. I don't have any ab separation. My core feels super knitted and strong and tight. Even my midwife was like, I've honestly never seen somebody's core feel like this during pregnancy. She kept saying that every time she was like mind blown. So I have Nancy Anderson to thank for that. Definitely have some muscle definition to get back especially in my legs, I can tell, feeling a little weak. So I'm gonna make some really, really epic peanut butter chocolate overnight oats with two bananas, two tablespoons of hemp seeds. These are gonna be super high in protein, by the way. Then I'm gonna do some peanut butter chocolate protein powder, two cups of rolled oats. I love Anthony's, they just have a nice texture. One cup soy milk, one cup water, pinch of Himalayan salt, a tablespoon or two of cinnamon, one to two tablespoons of organic maple syrup. Mix it up, let it set while I go back and get ready in the bathroom quick. I like to top it with berries. It's gonna be so good. Now you can Careful. see peaches. Go on. Say, oh, peaches. Oh, peaches. Perfect timing. We also just got a restock on our Compliment Essential Multi, and we love the gut nurture. This is great for digestion and elimination. It contains a postbiotic, which is the end product of a probiotic. It helps with 
a healthy gut lining and the immune system. It's got licorice root and some other things in there that, like I said, is really gonna help to soothe digestion. I've been doubling up on my omegas and we just tried their omega complex, which contains EPA and DHA. Compliments Hero product is obviously the essential, but if you haven't heard of it, then you need to hear about it. So the essential contains the eight critical nutrients that plant-based eaters want to make sure they're staying on top of. So B12, D3, K2, iodine, selenium, zinc, and magnesium. We can get pretty much everything from diet with the exception of B12, which comes from a bacteria found in the soil. That being said, you just wanna make sure your bases are covered, but a typical multi, a lot of times, is going to have above and beyond what we need, and that just leads to expensive neon pee. Instead, if you just get something like Compliment, it has everything you need, nothing more. You take three capsules a day. I always like to divide and space my supplements out. You guys can use Eat Move Rest 15 for 15% off all of their products, and I'll link it below in the description. The newest edition of Forks Over Knives magazine. There are always so many good recipes in these. Fettuccine with cilantro, spinach, pesto, and carrot ribbons. That sounds and looks incredible, doesn't it? Grilled corn carbonara. Not oh. grilled corn carbonara. <laughs> okay. Zoe's sleeping. The kids are playing in the shower because they are so dirty. So I don't go a day without nourishing myself in some way. I love herbal face food so much. I always add the cure to my chest area because it's a spot treatment. And I'm like, well, it's pretty spotty there, so <laughs> I'm gonna do it all over. And then I do the serum three on my face. The reason I love starting with herbal face food is that it's so clean, you could eat it. Literally, it's amazing. Just check it out. You can use my discount code linked below. We decided to take our homeschool outside. Whenever we get a little restless, it just means it's time to shift focus and usually getting outdoors helps as well. So we both are obsessed with the Picture This app on my phone. Ooh, Star Jasmine. Okay, so we found a really cool one on the side lot. I find that like, it just looks like a pile of weeds, but when you really get in the thick of it, literally, you'll find some pretty fascinating stuff. So we found the plant that castor bean oil comes from, which is really weird, you would have never thought. And then we found a muscadine grapevine. So these are just growing randomly off the side of our house. Katuk is one of our absolute favorites. We intentionally are growing. It's super high in protein. Mm. It's so, so good. It's got like a, a nutty-like taste to it. Great to add to salads. So I finally reached a moment of pause where I can sit down and kind of fill you in on the last six weeks and how I'm feeling, what we've been up to. So I thought I would actually answer some questions from a little question box that I popped on my Instagram stories a couple days ago. The first one kind of had me laughing. Why are you so thin after delivering when I'm still like a hippo? <laughs> and honestly, I just feel like I really worked my butt off quite frankly, to be honest, throughout pregnancy and leading up to it as well. So I've always been a fitness fanatic and I maintained that level of fitness throughout my entire pregnancy up until the day before I delivered Zoe. So I was on my Peloton literally the day before. The day I was going into labor, I had considered getting on my bike, but I passed it up. So. I just think that coupled with diet and other lifestyle modifications has helped tremendously. I think since going whole food plant-based, I'm able to consume an abundance of food without having to worry about my body fluctuating too much up or down. It just tends to find its equilibrium. The majority of experts will vouch for this as well. That being said, it does require a lot of extra calories to stay active and breastfeed. So breastfeeding alone requires four to 500 calories in order to maintain proper milk supply 
in order to nourish both yourself and baby. So I am eating a lot right now. <laughs> Zoe seems to have such a calm demeanor, would you agree? This was another common question. And yes, she is very, very mellow. And two of my close mom friends who I've made here in Florida, their third child was the same way, just super even keeled and really chill. So I was kind of like, I sure hope that's the case for us. So I think baby number two is always like the go-getter because they wanna keep up with baby number one. And then baby number three, I kind of feel like they get handled so much by one and two that they just develop a really chill demeanor. <laughs> so that's definitely been the case for Zoe. She hardly ever cries. Even in the middle of the night when I wake up to feed her, it's not because she's crying. It's usually because she's like grunting and kicking me with her little feet. It's so funny. Another very common question, do you put anything in your hair so long and beautiful? Thank you so much, first of all. And this is the first time I have fully committed to not cutting my hair. So it usually gets to about here and I get tired of it, I get impatient, and I chop it to like the long bob or the lob cut, which I still feel like suits me really well, but I am so determined to see how long my hair can get. And it's been thicker than ever. I would say since about the end of February, beginning of March, the only thing I've changed is the Oliveda supplements. So the IO1 and the vegan hyaluronic drink. So I do those every single day. And I think both of those have really contributed to thickening in this part. Maybe I'll pop in a before and after picture right here for you guys. When it gets longer, you definitely have to care for it more because the hair is just getting older and older and older at the ends and it can be more susceptible to breakage. So I only wash my hair twice a week, sometimes once a week. And I also use a Tangle Teaser brush that I found on Amazon and the kids use it as well. It's really, really great for super fine hair. So I think that might also be a contributing factor. And last but not least, using less heat products. So I used to curl my hair a lot and flat iron it a lot, blow dry it a lot. But here in Florida, it's so hot and humid and muggy that I don't even bother. I don't waste the time. It's just top knot. I would say in incorporate some of those practices. And then if you can get like a really nourishing hair oil that you can treat your hair with before you wash it. So massaging it in because also that scalp massage is going to stimulate circulation and help with hair growth as well. Ooh, this is a juicy one. How you manage your life with three kids. You look so happy and relaxed at the same time. So I would like to say that it's that way, but it's only a small fraction of the time. And that's the small fraction you're seeing on social media because let's face it, who is going to turn their camera on or hold the phone in their own face or on their kid's or husband's face when everybody's in the middle of a meltdown? It's just not reality and that's not where your mind goes. And on top of that, like, we just wanna spread the light and be the light because I know this world is a dark place and it feels dense and heavy at times. So we do our best to bring the life, to bring the color, but if I'm being real and candid and raw and honest with you guys right now, I had a meltdown earlier today. I had one yesterday. I feel like recently, like almost like this can't get above water feeling like where I'm just like scrambling, scrambling, scrambling every single day, but I cannot get ahead. And it's because my checklist keeps growing and I'm not checking up off enough things on it. And I know that's wrong of me. Like we are human beings. We're not human doings. I know all of these things. I know everything, but it's so hard to put it into practice. And honestly, a lot of times it just leaves me feeling like a phony because especially in our Eat, Move, Rest membership with our inner circle members, we show up and we are expected to be the ones that are helping others, that are pulling them up out of the hole. But at times I feel like a hypocrite, like I'm not heeding my own advice or my own wisdom. And it makes me feel like a broken record to say these things and to not do them all perfectly. Now I'm just rambling, but long story short, it is not all peachy keen over here. So. Max and Liv fight quite often. They get along pretty well too, but they do get under each other's skin. When Liv cries, then Zoe cries. And then when all of that happens, then Dusty gets mad and then I get upset and then Dusty and I fight. So baby number three has been really tough just because they're all at such different stages. I'm catering to a newborn who needs me 100% of the time and then you don't want your middle child to feel like the middle child. 
so you have to be extra sensitive to them. And then the oldest child, you don't want to forget about them either just because they're the most mature and can fend for themselves the most. And it's just like they all need you in different ways. Max and I are starting to get into a really good homeschool rhythm, but then Liv wants to be a part of it too, but they're not at the same lear learning curve level. So it's tough. I've got a lot of questions about how is sleep going and what is your setup because we are co-sleeping. In the master bedroom we have a king size bed and I actually found a little um, twin XL mattress on Amazon. It's like this thick. It's a little floor mattress. We actually were able to perfectly squeeze it on Dusty's side of the bed between the bed and the wall. So Usually there's three of us in the bed, me and Zoe, and then one other person, and then a couple usually sleep down on the mattress. Usually Max is always sleeping on the mattress and Dusty feels bad, so he like ends up down there with him or he's reading the kids a story and they all three fall asleep down there, but Liv always makes her way back up into the bed next to me because she still wants to nurse at bedtime and in the morning when she wakes up. Our bed's super low to the floor, but I keep a pillow there just in case, heaven forbid, Zoe were to roll out or Liv were to roll out. But it's working really well and it makes it so that we are able to get good sleep. Although I will say I've really been kicking myself for going to bed so late and it's been ever since the time change. We do this every year, like when the when the days get longer, we spend all of our waking hours like outside and busy bodying around. My goal is to start winding down sooner, put my device away sooner, like no more phone like an hour before bedtime. In fact, that's part of our challenge. We're doing a 14 day rest challenge in our Eat, Move, Rest group. What helps you on days where taking care of kids is a lot, but no time for self care? I would say like my top non-negotiable is usually movement, so. You know, the best thing for me has been having our garage gym so that I can always be guaranteed a simple sweat session. It can be 30 minutes, 45, an hour, whatever I have time for and whatever works out with the kids. But the best thing is they like to play in the garage. They've got their balls and their toys and their trucks and all kinds of fun stuff. So usually they're okay hanging out out there with me. So I think what helped me most was just knowing that something's gotta give and then giving myself grace. So today I'm gonna skip my skincare routine, even though I love that time because it's my time to prop my phone up and listen to a podcast or whatever. So the camera died literally on my very last question, but probably for good reason because I was getting way too long-winded as I tend to do. So we're gonna round out the video right here and end it with our delicious new dinner from Forks Over Knives. It is smelling so good. I gotta say, the smell from the grill immediately put me into summer vibes mode and I just feel so super chill and just happy. This is my favorite time of day. I love it when the sun is about to set. It cools down and I can finally just say, oh, I didn't get it all done, but I surrender. <laughs> This is a feeling I'm hoping to hang on to and carry throughout my day today, not just at the end of the day, not just in the summertime. So that is my like number one goal, life goals, always trying to figure out how I can be continually chill and zen and blissed out. So leave me your suggestions in the comments below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out Compliment and all the other goods linked below with discounts. If you wanna join me on the inside to hear more about life inside the Stanzik household, how we are eating, moving, and resting our best, be sure to join our yearly membership. You can get access for 75% off for life. That's a continued discount every year that you renew. So it's all linked below. We'll see you guys next time. Much love. Peace.